Welcome to Storytime at Drawing Club. Today we're drawing Percival P. Pigworthy. So this is Percival P. Pigworthy. And to draw Percival, you will need a pencil and an eraser and maybe a pencil sharpener and then a black pencil crayon or a black marker to outline him with at the end. And maybe some color pencils or some color markers too. But as usual, I'm going to draw with a gray marker uh, so you can see what I'm doing. But not like usual, instead of talking you through the drawing today, I'm going to just tell you a story about uh, Percival P. Pigworthy while I draw. So you watch what I'm doing with my hands uh, and copy that to make the drawing, but you can listen to the story. Okay, so let's start. Now don't forget, if I'm drawing too quickly for you, you can always pause the video and catch up. Okay, let's start with our story. Percival P. Pigworthy was a quiet pig. Every afternoon, he drank lukewarm Darjeeling tea, ate thick slices of toast covered in raspberry jam, and fell asleep in his chair. He didn't like to leave his house very often, but one day, his old friend Chester Froggington III invited him to stay for the weekend at his large manor house in the countryside. Percival Pigworthy didn't really want to go, but when he heard that the other guests would be Lady Veronica Vole, and Duchess Henrietta Eggs Benedict, he changed his mind. Although he was a quiet pig, he did enjoy sharing food and conversation with interesting ladies. And, to be honest, he had a bit of a crush on Lady Veronica. After travelling to his friend's house, eating a fine dinner and playing some cards, Percival and the other guests all went to bed. The next morning, the sleepy pig was awoken by a loud scream from the kitchen. Ah! He bustled down the stairs in his dressing gown to find the maid staring in horror at four empty plates on the kitchen table. What is it? asked Percival. The maid, a fluffy grey rabbit named Penny O'Carrot, pointed at the plates. Tis the breakfast scones, Mr. Pigworthy. I had them all laid out on the table here and someone stolen them. Just then, Chester Froggington, Lady Veronica, and Duchess Henrietta burst into the room. What's the meaning of this awful racket? demanded Chester. Miss Penny has just informed me that someone has absconded with our breakfast scones, replied Percival. What? thundered Chester. How dare they! Phone the authorities immediately! Oh, how awful, said Lady Veronica, and I was so looking forward to mine. Now, now, don't become over-emotional, dear, said Duchess Henrietta Eggs Benedict. I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of this. It was probably one of the servants. Make sure you lock all the doors, Chester. We don't want anyone getting away before the police get here. Yes, yes, you're right, of course, muttered the old frog, pulling on his moustache. Penny! Bring the other servants in here, and I'll phone for the constabulary. Ah, I don't think there'll be any need for that, interrupted Percival P. Pigworthy politely. There is something I need to tell you. Although you know me as a simple, toast-and-jam-loving pig, I do, in fact, have another name and another job. Ooh, what are you saying, Percival? said Lady Veronica, her vole whiskers twitching in surprise. I am, perhaps, the most famous pig detective in England. You mean you solve crimes committed by pigs? said Duchess Henrietta. Um, no, I mean I am a pig, and I'm a famous detective. Steady on, old chap, you're not saying... Yes, that's right. I am Hog Mild, consulting detective to Scotland Barnyard. Hog Mild? squeaked Lady Veronica in delight. I would never have guessed. And can you solve the mystery of who stole the scones? I believe I can, yes. Let's start with the facts as we know them. Last night, after a vigorous game of crib, we all retired to bed. Then, this morning, we were all awoken by Penny's scream. This much is certain, yes? Tis true, sir, agreed Penny her eyes full of tears at the lost scones. And what kind of scones were they, pray tell? 
asked the pig detective. Well, there was a plain one with raspberry jam for you, sir, and, and one with flies on it for Mr. Froggington, and one with raisins for Lady Veronica, and, um, and one with mealworms for Duchess Henrietta. I see. Already I think the case is solved. Amazing pigworthy! shouted Chester, clapping his webbed hands. It was one of the servants, I'm sure of it, said Duchess Henrietta. They've all got sticky fingers. Well, yes, but that's because most of them are frogs. They can't help that. But none of them are the thief, said Percival. But surely you can't mean to say, started the Duchess. That is exactly what I mean to say, interjected Percival. One of the guests ate the scones. Lady Veronica screamed in alarm. Get a hold of yourself, girl, said the Duchess sternly. Then she turned back to the pig detective. That's a very serious accusation. What evidence do you have for it? Elementary. There is only one person who could have eaten all four scones. Aside from the fact that she baked the scones herself and would likely be fired if she had stolen them, Penny here could never have eaten all of them. Rabbits like her are herbivores. The fly and mealworm scones would have made her sick. Now, Chester here might have eaten the fly scone and perhaps even the mealworm scone, but he would never have eaten the plain one or the raisin one. How true! Can't stand raisins! Why would anyone ever eat shriveled up grapes? There's nothing wrong with raisins, sir. They're a most delectable treat. But if it wasn't Chester or any of the servants, you can't mean to suggest that I or Lady Veronica did it, spluttered the Duchess in outrage. I will admit that when it comes to you ladies, ruling you out as suspects is a bit more difficult. Voles like Lady Veronica are mostly herbivorous, meaning they prefer plants to meat. However, they do sometimes eat insects. And the same is true for chickens like you, Duchess. Well, I've never been so insulted. Chester, get one of the servants to fetch my bags. I'm leaving at once. If you'll just wait a moment, madam, I will explain how I know both you and the Lady Veronica are also innocent of this crime. What? I don't understand, man. What are you saying? shouted Chester. My dear friends, when you have eliminated the impossible... It was you! gasped Lady Veronica. You ate the scones. Look, the crumbs are all over your dressing gown. Exactly, cried Percival. Only I had both the omnivorous appetite and capacious stomach to have eaten all four breakfasts. But, but why, man, why? said Chester in dismay. I'm afraid I can't control it. I sleep eat. I must have smelt the baking scones in my sleep and come down and scarfed the whole lot. I'm dreadfully sorry, old boy. Oh, well, no harm done, I suppose, said the frog. Penny, can you make us up another four scones? Certainly, Mr. Froggington, sir, said the rabbit. Um, make it two scones for me, said Percival. Food I eat when I'm asleep never seems to fill my belly. Oh, Percival, you're incorrigible, laughed Lady Veronica. I still think it might have been the servants, said the Duchess. Okay, so that's all we have for our story today, and I thought it would go a little bit longer than it has, because I still look like I have a lot of drawing left to do. So, do you know what? I think I'm going to play some music while I finish the drawing with my black ink pen, and you guys can just watch if you like and uh, finish your own drawings. It was awesome to have you here again at Storytime uh, for Drawing Club, and uh, next Friday we will have another story about another silly character. All right, I will see you guys then.